We're going to use the Curves Editor in DaVinci Resolve to try and make skin tones appear more natural by specifically addressing the highlight portions of the overall image. I accidentally overexposed this shot while using a Sony FS100. You can see the areas of her skin that are reaching overexposure are becoming discolored and the highlights seem overall a bit too harsh. This is common behavior on a lot of different types of cameras, but mainly the ones that aren't geared towards cinema. On a closer look, you can see where the bright area under her eyelid appears more yellow, whereas it shifts more towards a red hue further down. By using the curves, you can actually soften the transition from the midtones to the highlights by creating what's known as a knee. After applying the curve, you can see now that the transition from the midtones to the highlights is much less harsh. And here's the shot after adjusting the color wheels for a creative grade. You can see even with contrast introduced back in, the hue shift remains under control and isn't quick to contaminate with the yellow of the original. The custom curves editor in DaVinci, usually just called curves in other programs, will start out looking like this. The curve lets you assign any value to any other value by drawing points that make up a curve. For example, if I want to adjust this value, I would click here. And if I want to map it to this value, I drag it up here. Now I've taken a mid gray and brightened it, creating a curve. For this example, we're adjusting the red, green, and blue channels simultaneously, which is the default starting mode for most apps. Sampling the same three spots on each image, you can see how the colors are affected. The mid-tones show a greater contrast than the dark and light tones, since that was the part of the curve most being manipulated. So let's open up DaVinci Resolve to see how we can use curves to flatten out the highlights of this shot. From within the color section of DaVinci, make sure the curves icon is selected. Just below that, click the dot to the far left or use the drop down menu to the right of the dots and select custom curves. A really handy way to pinpoint problematic highlights and many other issues is to use the color picker. Clicking anywhere in the image will plot that pixel's value to the curve. What I want to select is the value just below where the color starts contaminating to yellow on the cheekbone. Now we know where that value lies on the curve and we can manipulate it or in this case manipulate the values around it. Judging this is mostly to taste, but keep an eye on the waveform and you'll see how much the highlights are being compressed. The best advice I can think of for this stage is to create a smooth curve to end up with a smooth result. Like with most color adjustments, subtlety is hugely important when dealing with the curves. Press Command or Control D to switch the current node on and off to see the difference. Notice how the highlights seem to pulse, since that's the main part of the image we affected. If we look at the waveforms for each, the highlight area of the original looks thin and stretched out. What this means is that the image from the camera is trying to cover a wide range of value with a more limited amount of data, and this creates that ugly steep jump from the highlights we're seeing on the original image. I want to add some contrast back into the image, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new serial node by using Alt or Option S. All I need to do is drag the lift slider downward. Just watch the graph. I want my waveform to get close to the bottom, but not touch the bottom. That way I'll make sure I'm not losing any data. If I have no direction for the shot, which almost never happens, I'll just move around the wheels until I spot a look that I like. Adjusting shadow tones with the lift, I like the way this cyan makes the ocean look a little more blue and softens the magenta cast on the skin tones. Now I'll adjust the highlights with gain. I cool them down a little bit, just like with the lift. Since most of the skin tones remain in the mids, the gamma has the biggest effect on them. I like the look, but I think it's a bit too strong. 
You can dial back the strength of a node by going to the key tab and adjusting gain under key output. For cases like this, I usually like to take it to each extreme and then adjust it to somewhere in the middle to taste. So here's the original versus the final. Even though I probably went too green on the skin tones, the skin still has a much more even, subtle gradation to it, which looks much better to me than the original does. Now looking at some different footage from the same camera, again the highlights of the scene are too exaggerated. Using the same procedure, the result is again a much softer, less distracting transition to the highlights. This gets us into a very practical benefit to the technique. By taming the highlights, we're effectively controlling the contrast of that area, or more importantly, the composition of the entire scene. Now that the eye is less drawn towards the snow outside the window, it's more quickly able to land on the subject of the scene. This is a pretty big deal, since cinematography is so much about directing the eye. Now here's where small HD comes in. Since these kinds of techniques enable you to compose your shots differently, being able to view them in the field while shooting becomes even more important. So in any of our new monitors, you can place nearly any type of 3D LUT files straight from DaVinci or other color grading software onto an SD card and the monitor will display them as you shoot. You can also place several looks on different pages and swipe between them to try out new ideas on the fly or to test out new techniques in real-world shooting conditions. Feel free to subscribe to our newsletter for more tutorials, looks, and free firmware updates.